Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So today what we'll do is we'll continue working on the DIY alarm system. Um, keep in mind that I'm just going to do the basic setup today. So just configuring the user interface. So we have a functioning alarm system, but it's not gonna do anything yet. It'll just function as an alarm, but we won't have any warnings or notifications coming through. It'll just be the basic functionality. Um, the reason for that is um, I'm still waiting for a few stuff to come um, to arrive. Uh, you can set up your own automations using this, but we will still cover using the automations in the future. But with that said, let's go ahead and take a look. There we go. So as you can see, we're back in the old interface, the old configuration. So my main configuration to put it that way, everything is good to go we should all be on the same level if you have been following along everything should look fairly similar to what i have right here now guys there is one thing that i need to tell you is remember i'm using this son of bridge for my sensors now using this could cause a security risk in some people's eyes saying that yeah there's a lot of things that could go wrong and there is things that may go wrong that's correct um, but this is a DIY alarm system so it's not going to be perfect if you are really concerned about stuff going wrong then I would recommend rather using a actual security company that you pay a monthly fee for and they send someone out when something goes wrong this is just for me for personal use I want to know if my windows gets opened I want to set up automations that alerts me when something's going on at the house. So, and I'm definitely also not going to pay an alarm company to do that on my behalf. So yes, there is a lot of things, uh, especially with these on off ones, um, these wireless sensors. What happens is, say for example, your son off goes offline. So say for example, it's closed and the son off goes offline and then you open up the window while Sonoff is offline, the window would be open, but the state will still show as closed. So that is one thing to keep in mind, especially with wireless sensors. And then there's also people that say, yes, they can uh, attack your wireless network. Well, of course, if, you, if someone attacks your wireless network, it's going to go offline and it also won't work. But really, um, if someone wants to break into your house, they're going to break in either way, with or without an alarm system, they're going to break into your house. If they want to be in here, they'll be in here. So, but I'm not gonna go into deep into that, um, but people are usually not smart enough to use something like that, they'll just break in, just to keep that in mind. They won't go through all the efforts of finding resources or cloning keys or anything, they'll just break in, bottom line. So with that said, um, in the last one we sent set up the actual alarm system so we have the alarm bar here so I showed you guys how to get this running now um, I did leave the default password to log into the settings and the description of the previous video so if this decides to load there we go so if we click on the settings option right here it'll ask us for an admin password now i did leave that in the description i'll leave it in this one as well so there we go so i just entered it in so the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna click going to click on the alarm section right here and then you'll see we have some options in here um you can go ahead and enable this which means it'll just uh, keep the state even if it is uh, even if home assistant restart it'll go back to the original state it was on so we'll enable that definitely because we want to even if home assistant restart we want to have the alarm keep the state then you have a panic code um, as you can see it's just a normal code that you type in if you have if you are um, being held at gunpoint or something you can go in and have a panic code which would disable the alarm but still send a triggered function then you have a require passcode to set the alarm. We leave that as off um, because anyone would be able to set the alarm. Then we have the option just below it, um, ignore sensors on arm. Um, I would enable, uh, I would not enable this. Um, this means it's only going to arm the alarm if all of the sensors are set to close. So it won't activate the alarm until all of your sensors has been closed. So I'll leave that as is. Then disarm attempt. So the amount of times a password could be typed in wrong before it's going to time you out. 
and then um, disarm attempts timeout. So the amount of time it's going to timeout you for if you try to type in the um, password wrong a few times. So you can change that to your needs. Then below we have the log and then uh, you can do user specific codes which i'm not going to enable i'll just leave everything as is um, it's going to be a generic uh, pin for now and that's it for the alarm settings that we have in here basically i didn't change a lot i just enable the persistence so to keep the to keep the alarm active and then you can update the master passcode right here so the next part is going to be the sensors right here. Um, so we have two options right here. We have the away mode, and then we also have the home mode right here. So this is just a way of setting a few options. So right here, we have the grace time in seconds before alarm is armed for away. Now, away mode is usually when you are leaving your house. So say, for example, you're going out, you're coming back in a few hours or maybe the next day, um, but you do have a pending time. So the amount of time after you have entered in that code, it'll stay in pending before arming. So you can still move around the house for the specified amount of time. So say, for example, I type in here uh, 20 seconds Remember, you also need to check the box right here just to make it stick. So it's going to give me 20 seconds to get out of the house and make sure everything is closed off to before the alarm would be active. The same with the entry warning time. So right here, also the same grace period. So if you enter the house, you need to disarm it, disarm the alarm. Um, exactly the same, it won't trigger until uh, the specified time amount has been passed but that's only for sensors that you specify. So I'll tell you in a minute where that is. So I'm going to set that to 20 as well. And then trigger time. So the amount of seconds the alarm state triggers before returning to the previous state. Then below it, we need to select our sensors. Now this is going to show you all of the sensors you have in your home assistant installation. We have immediate and delayed and then override. We're only going to use immediate and delayed. So with it, with this, we are going to look for our specific sensors. So mine's a bit down. Um, I did add some solar in here. So what we're looking for is the sensors right here. The first one I have is my bedroom one, and that's for the window. So I'm going to enable those for immediate. Remember, this is the immediate column. Now I need these to trigger immediately as soon as it has been opened, because I'm not going to uh, open a window to get into my house to disarm the alarm. So those need to go off immediately. The kitchen door, however, that needs to be delayed, because we don't want the alarm to trigger instantly as soon as I walk in the door. Um, I still need to have time to go ahead and disable that alarm. That's the same with the kitchen PIR because that'll also detect me as soon as that opens. Now for the kitchen window, that can go in and trigger immediately because I don't need to open the kitchen window to disarm the alarm. Living room PIR, that I'll leave at immediate as well, as well as all the living room windows those can go off immediately as soon as it has been triggered. That's all the sensors that I have in my house for now. But with this basic setup, we should have it configured to trigger immediately if one of these get triggered or give that 20 second delay if um, movement is detected in the kitchen or the door is open in the kitchen. Now we go into the next section which is the exact same um, setup the only difference is it's for home mode so it's just a different mode of arming the alarm and then you can set up your senses differently depending if you are at your house so maybe you're going to bed at night you want to enable the alarm but you don't want all of the sensors to be active because you may want to go to the loo or something like that or you're still walking around in the house and you can enable this so how we would do that um, we can add in a time delay in here if you want to i'm going to leave it as default for 20 sec 25 seconds so trigger time can be exactly the same in here it's going to be uh, 300 seconds so if we go down all i'm going to do is enable the immediate ones 
so I'm not going to open up the door once I'm home. Um, so that can go in and trigger the alarm immediately. The kitchen PIR, I don't want to be enabled. So I'm leaving that blank. The kitchen window, definitely not going to open that while I'm at my house. The living room PIR, I need to walk through my living room into the kitchen to get to the to the so I don't need to enable that so basically all I'm going to enable is all my windows so as soon as my windows triggers the state it'll trigger the alarm immediately I won't have a delay it'll just trigger the alarm immediately that won't stop me from walking around inside my house without triggering any of the PIR sensors because those will be disarmed because this is set to arm home so when I am at my home I don't need these sensors to be triggered because I'm so active inside. Only when someone tries to break in or open up a window, then it'll trigger these specific sensors. And the last thing we need to do is we need to change that master code right here. Um, I know it did say it's the password to get in. It was wrong. Um, it's not the password. The master code in here is going to be the pin code that you need to type in to unlock your alarm. So in my case, I'm just going to uh, leave it as one two three four for now to set the master um, code to get into the settings panel um, you'll do that from the design page or the design tab right up here so if we click on design here we have the admin password now remember that's the one that I left in the description I'll leave it in this one as well so you can go in and update the master password right here now you do have some display uh, display options you can enable here as well. I don't need that. I just need a basic alarm. You can even go in and hide the panel right here. So say you're using a tablet to view the alarm setup, you can go in and hide this panel right here when it is armed. But that's it for setting up the alarm. So if we click back to the alarm panel right here, we may need to go to a different state and come back in here. So if I arm it right now, um, I can go in and disable it with that code. There we go. So my 1234 is still working. If I arm away, as you can see, it gives us that countdown timer where it gives us time to leave the house. So it's waiting, it's counting down that time before the alarm is going to be active. Once that countdown timer is complete, the alarm would be active. So what I can do is while we wait for that is I can go in and trigger one of these real quick. So it shows us that it is armed away right now. So what I can do is I can open up the bedroom window and there you see it changes the state to triggered. And that's it. Now it's going to stay triggered even if you close this window until you manually disarm the alarm. There we go. Now one more thing you can do is right in your overview page right here we can come in configure UI click on the plus sign and then click on the alarm panel right here. And then we have the entity and right here it gives us house that's the name of my panel. And there we go we have the two states there it's not necessary to change anything right here we'll leave those two states as is hit save and there we go so now we have the alarm panel listed right here i can just move this one up so there we go so once we added that we do have the arm home if we are home or arm away if we're going away now it's quite easy um to arm it so the way we set it up if we just click on arm away and that's going to go in and enable the option. So we don't need to type in the pin to arm the alarm. We just click on arm away and that's immediately change the state to pending. So it's giving us that 20 second gap to arm the alarm on get out. And once we are out, it'll automatically enable that. So as soon as that is armed and we trigger the um, door right here, you'll see it change the state to triggered right there and that's going to be it for this one guys um i know there's a lot of information in here and we still haven't gotten to the automations but we needed to go in and set up that user interface while i'm waiting for some stuff to come in as well um in the next one hopefully i'll have all the information all the stuff that we need to set up the rest of the alarm and set up those automations so we can trigger some events as soon as the alarm has been triggered if you guys do have any questions feel free to go ahead and comment down below 
and I'll see you in the next one.